Nine steps to rewire your brain. Let's get right into it. Number one, recognize that your brain is being hacked. Your brain is a masterpiece of evolution designed to help you survive, not scroll. It runs on a simple ancient principle, maximize reward, minimize effort. Thousands of years ago, this was perfect. Finding food, staying safe, or forming relationships all release dopamine nature's way of saying, good job, stay alive. But today, that same wiring is being hijacked. Every app, every notification, every bite of junk food has been carefully designed to exploit your dopamine system. You open social media for a quick look. You're instantly flooded with novelty, validation, and endless stimulation. Your brain thinks it's hunting mammoths and finding fruit trees, but all it's doing is tapping a glass screen. The result? You get caught in a loop of easy dopamine, quick pleasure, zero effort, focus fades, motivation collapses. Even meaningful work feels dull compared to the next hit of stimulation. The first step to rewiring your brain isn't about discipline or motivation, it's awareness. Once you realize your brain has been manipulated and that your attention is being harvested, you begin to take the power back. Number two, understand what dopamine really does. Here's the truth. Dopamine isn't the pleasure chemical, it's the wanting chemical. It doesn't make you feel pleasure, it makes you seek pleasure. When you crave a slice of pizza or the thrill of new notifications, that's dopamine talking. It spikes not when you get the reward, but when you anticipate it. The scroll, the wait, the chase, that's the high. But there's a catch. When you flood your brain with easy dopamine from endless scrolling, gaming, junk food, porn, your dopamine receptors start to downregulate. In plain language, your brain becomes numb. What once excited you now barely moves the needle. So you seek stronger hits, faster feedback, more stimulation, and the cycle tightens. This is why real life starts to feel boring. Your brain isn't broken. It's just overstimulated. The fix isn't to kill dopamine. It's to rebalance it. You have to lower artificial highs so that your brain can once again respond to natural rewards like focus, effort, and achievement. That's where the dopamine detox comes in. Number three, do a dopamine detox. Let's clear up a common misconception. A dopamine detox isn't about removing dopamine. You can't and you wouldn't want to. Dopamine is essential for motivation, focus, and life itself. A detox means cutting off the artificial overstimulation, the constant hits that keep your brain stuck in a hyper-reward loop. Think of it like dimming an overexposed photo. Once you reduce the brightness, the natural light becomes visible again. The timeline depends on how deep your habits go. Three days. You'll feel restless, but notice how often your brain craves stimulation. Seven days. You'll start regaining focus and clarity. Fourteen days. Deep rewiring begins natural rewards start to feel good again. During this time, you'll face boredom, irritability, maybe even a sense of emptiness. That's not failure, that's detox. It's your brain recalibrating its reward system. The goal isn't perfection. It's to create space for balance to remind your brain that fulfillment comes from effort not excess. Number four, identify and remove dopamine junk. Once you decide to detox, you have to know what you're detoxing from. Every brain has its own dopamine junk, those quick, low effort, high stimulation habits that hijack your focus. For some, it's social media or YouTube shorts. For others, it's gaming, junk food, or constant texting. Maybe it's checking your phone the second you wake up or scrolling until 2 a.m. These are the empty calories of the mind. They give you a quick burst of pleasure, but leave you mentally starved. Here's the trap. Each hit reinforces the craving. Every like, every new video, every notification lights up the reward center like fireworks. And when that becomes your default, real life reading, learning, working feels dull in comparison. So you need to make a list of your personal dopamine junk. Write it down. See it clearly. Then, during your detox phase, it says, remove or heavily restrict those activities. You're not giving them up forever. You're creating scarcity. When your brain stops being constantly fed junk, it starts to crave balance again. This step is like cleaning a dirty lens. You can't see clearly until you wipe away the residue. Number five, replace with clean dopamine activities. Here's where most people fail. They remove their bad habits, but don't replace them with anything. And the brain hates a vacuum. If you take away stimulation, your mind will invent new distractions. The solution? 
Replace artificial highs with what I call clean dopamine, slow, meaningful, effort-based activities. Read a physical book. Go for a walk without music. Exercise with no phone. Cook your own meals. Journal by hand. Have a deep, unhurried conversation with someone. At first, these will feel painfully boring. That's not a problem that's progress. It means your brain is recalibrating. It's learning to find joy and effort again, to anticipate reward instead of demanding it instantly. After a few days, something shifts. The calm starts to feel good. Your mind becomes clearer. You start looking forward to quiet mornings or simple tasks. That's your dopamine system healing. Clean dopamine doesn't spike, it flows. It gives you focus, presence, and real satisfaction instead of restlessness. This is how you begin to rewire your brain, not by removing pleasure, but by rediscovering real pleasure. Number six, shift from pleasure to satisfaction. Modern life has trained your brain to chase pleasure, instant, effortless, disposable pleasure. But pleasure and satisfaction are two completely different things. Pleasure is fast and external. It's the dopamine hit from a like, a snack, or a click. It feels good but fades fast, leaving you emptier than before. Satisfaction, on the other hand, is slow and internal. It comes from effort, mastery, and meaning. It builds gradually, but it lasts. When you spend hours learning a skill, finishing a workout, or building something meaningful, your brain rewards you with deep contentment. That's dopamine too, just a more sustainable kind. Rewiring your brain means retraining it to seek satisfaction instead of stimulation. That shift transforms everything. Work stops feeling like punishment. It becomes its own reward. The harder you work, the better you feel. Ironically, satisfaction ends up generating more dopamine over time than quick pleasure ever could. It's the difference between a sugar rush and a full meal. When your brain learns to crave satisfaction, you no longer chase pleasure you created. Number seven, strengthen the discipline circuits. Your brain has two major systems constantly fighting for control. One is ancient the limbic system. It's impulsive, emotional, driven by instant gratification. The other is modern the prefrontal cortex. It's responsible for focus, self-control, and long-term planning. Every time you give in to an impulse checking your phone, procrastinating, snacking out of boredom, the limbic system wins. It gets stronger. But every time you resist distraction and choose effort instead, your prefrontal cortex fires up literally strengthening the neural pathways responsible for discipline and self-mastery. Discipline isn't just a mental concept, it's neurological training. Each act of self-control, no matter how small, is like lifting a weight for your prefrontal cortex. That's why consistency matters more than intensity. Skipping one scroll session, finishing one hard task, Waking up when you said you would, these micro-moments are rewiring your brain structure. Over time, effort starts to feel natural. Focus becomes easier. Distraction loses its grip. You're not forcing discipline, you're becoming disciplined. And it's not about perfection, it's about repetition. Each choice you make strengthens the version of you who leads instead of reacts. Number 8. Redesign your environment and social circle. Here's a secret. Your environment shapes your habits more than your willpower ever will. If your phone's on the desk, you'll check it. If junk food's in the kitchen, you'll eat it. If distractions are one click away, your brain will take the shortcut. So, stop relying on motivation. Redesign your environment to make good habits easy and bad ones hard. Keep your phone out of reach when you work. Block distracting websites. Set up your workspace before you sleep. Prep your gym clothes in advance. Small environmental tweaks have massive psychological effects. You're not resisting temptation, you're removing it. And then, there's your social environment. The people around you set your dopamine baseline. Spend time with people addicted to instant gratification, and you'll mirror their habits. But if you surround yourself with focused, disciplined, purpose-driven people, you'll naturally start to match their energy. Neuroscience calls this mirror neuron adaptation. You unconsciously sync your behaviors and emotional tone with those around you. So, build a circle that normalizes growth, patience, and self-control. Because willpower fades, but environment persists. Number 9. Maintain the rewiring process long-term. Rewiring your brain isn't a one-time project, it's maintenance. Like fitness, it's easy to lose progress if you stop training. The modern world constantly pulls your brain back toward easy dopamine, so, you need systems to keep balance. 
Schedule regular mini detoxes maybe one weekend a month or a full week every quarter. Use that time to unplug, reset, and reflect. Keep a dopamine journal track your triggers, cravings, and wins. Notice what gives you lasting energy versus what just drains you. Join a focus group or find accountability partners. Having someone who shares your goals doubles your consistency. And remember, every single time you choose focus over distraction, effort over ease, you're literally voting for the person you want to become. The vote doesn't need to be perfect, just consistent. Over months, this becomes your new baseline. Your brain learns that hard work, creativity, and peace are the real rewards. That's how you protect your attention and your potential. Conclusion. Master your mind. Rewiring your brain isn't about denying pleasure. It's about regaining control of it. You've seen how the modern world hijacks your dopamine, turning focus into fatigue and effort into avoidance. But by understanding how your brain works, you've learned how to flip the system. Through detoxing from overstimulation, replacing empty rewards with meaningful effort, and reshaping your habits and environment, you're training your brain to crave what truly matters. Discipline stops feeling like a fight. It becomes your natural rhythm. This is the real goal, not to live without dopamine, but to guide it. When hard work feels good and distraction feels dull, your brain is finally working for you, not against you. That's what real freedom feels like. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.